Uh, this video should be a little bit fun. What we're going to do today is a little bit different than my other videos. Is we're going to use a light box that uh, I bought to import into Lightburn different shapes and then be able to scale them properly so that I can use the laser to inlay whatever shape it is that I am creating or just to actually do a tracing to uh, engrave on whatever I'm doing. Now I've had problems in the past coming up with um, well let's say that I wanted to do this leaf. Now this is a maple leaf, I have a beech leaf over here, I have a whole bunch of different leaves and I like to make patterns on my artistic boxes so the more different patterns I have the more unique my boxes are and people like that. So for this demonstration we're going to show tracing some leaves as well and I also do some printed circuit work and I would like to be able to trace the outline and then I know where my holes are and it's very easy for me to create uh, a template on my laser that I'll use in the future for laying out my printed circuit boards or maybe I have some USB things that I want to just push into uh, a board for a storage area or something so you need to know the dimensions and everything and since I have a whole bunch of them, it's really a pain to take the different measurements for all the different types of USB things. Or, you know, maybe you lost a pattern from some something that you did a long time ago. Uh, this is a coaster I did. I kind of liked it, but I'm not sure I can find the pattern very easily. So what I can do is just retrace all these things using the light box. And at the end of the video, I'll show you where I bought it. It was from somebody on the Lightburn forum that recommended it, and I just loved it. So I went ahead and bought it. I use it, and uh, these are some of the ways that I use it. So enough of me blabbing. Let's go ahead and uh, do the demonstration. Today we're going to show you how to do a light box and use that with shapes to import into your work to laser. And it's pretty simple. I have some very weird shapes here, mainly from trees. So here's some leaves that I, that I acquired. Uh, these two are maple. This is, I think, beech. And also I have this fox that I 3D printed. Now the problem I'm going to have here is I'm going to take a photo of this and import that into Lightburn. But I have a scaling problem also. So what we have to do is put one piece that we know exactly what the measurements are and we're going to use that as a reference point so that we can size everything over here. Now I've got this camera on the side here that I'm going to use and what you have to do is just make sure that you're absolutely parallel to where, what you want to shoot and take a picture. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now this light table is very cheap. I paid less than $27 US and it comes with uh, adjustments on here so you can change the brightness level and uh, you can also just turn it on and off of course. So. There we go. Now let's go ahead and import these shapes into Lightburn and see what we got. All right, now we can have some fun. <clears throat> we got our picture that we took. So let's go ahead and bring it into Lightburn. We do that by doing a file import. And this is the picture I think. Let me see for sure. Yep, that's the one I took, so we'll take this one and bring it in. Wait for it to come ready. And there it is. I'm using the scroll to bring it up in size a little bit. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and turn this into a trace. That's what 
really what we want to do is trace the outlines here. So we now got a good contrast between black and white. So we do a trace by going Tools and uh, Trace Image, or we can just do an Alt-T. And you can see right away that it formed, there's a lot of garbage over here. That's, we'll get rid of that in a second. But it did the trace correctly. So we'll say OK to that. And in my system, when I say OK, it gets rid of the image. So I'm going to change the color of this to black for a second. All right, now there's a lot of trash noise here too, so let's get rid of that. So the first thing that we want to do is ungroup all of these images so that they're isolated. And we go that by doing Arrange and Ungroup. That ungroups all of these images. Now let's clear them out. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is I'll clear this section out. And uh, try one more. We'll clear that out. And then I'm going to highlight this area here and get rid of that. And come down here, delete that. Go across here and delete that. And we might have something still here. Yeah, there's a there's a few things here. Let's see what happens if I do that. Yeah, that's the only thing left. Okay, so now I got a pretty clean image. I and mean, you can see that. And let's say if I take this guy over here and change him to layer 5, which is my fill layer, and then I do a Windows Preview, you can see that that's the image that's going to be traced out and burnt on my uh, laser. And that's beautiful. I mean, that, that's exactly what I would want to, to do. Okay, but now we got a little bit of a problem here. Let's go to here and notice that... Well, let me get this right side up. So if I highlight everything here and then just go... Um, Rotate 80. That gets everything right. There we go. These aren't real image size. They're probably expanded considerably. So let's take a look at my reference. So we go back to my reference here. And the reference here, if you look on this corner here, is 131.860. 131.860. And this piece here is actually 38.0238. So that's the size of this image, and we know that's wrong. So if Okay, we're bringing up the calculator on the screen. We're now going to do our measurement, our scale measurements. So we already have the two measurements we need to produce a scale. So the first one is the master is 38.0238. That's my reference number. So when I did the measurement using Lightburn, that same object was now 131.0238. So that equated out to 0.28. We've got to multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. So that gives us 28.836, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to copy these so I can post them into the scale. And the more numbers you get, the better. I don't know what the maximum number is that Lightburn wants, but I'm going to use this much here. So I'll copy it and reduce that. And now we can go back to Lightburn and enter this into our scale number. So now I'll go back here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, duplicate this by hitting the Control D key, and this is going to be our reference. And I've highlighted just this area here, and I'm going to do a scale. Where's my scale? There it is. So. And here in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to paste in my scale, which is 28%, and hit the return key. Okay, now, this reduce this correctly, and down here, the number is 38.024. And since it should be 38.0238, I'm happy with that. That's 
that's more than enough. So that's how you scale it. Now I'm going to just move this off. Well, I'm not. If I wanted to scale all of this now, all I need to do is select everything, repeat my entry by putting my scale into this slot over here, say 28%, hit the return key. Now all of this is scaled. and I'm going to move it back up here for my purpose. Okay, so everything is scaled and it on this one here, since I have already scaled it one time, it scaled it again. But let's get rid of this. And this is the reference item, and it's still 38.024. That means that all of this other, the leaves are the right scale, the fox is the right scale. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this and make this an entry that's going to be filled. And I'm going to do a preview. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burn this on a scrap piece of wood and then we see how it fits after I'm done. Okay? So I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Okay, so we got the burn complete and I can, I'm sure you can see that I got a nice little engraving in there. And this is the piece, this is my reference piece, I just wanted to show you. It fits right in there, see, no problem. Doesn't come out. And then this is the fox, and that fits right in there nicely. So normally I would go a little bit deeper in the fox, so it sits down below, and I would have rounded off the edges on the fox. but. That's a quick demonstration of how you can do use your camera with a light table or light box to copy any image that you want. 